And we said, uh, we said, hey, there is all, all that we need uh, in that OS, we will use it. Let's give it a try, and uh, and, uh, and it was a uh, it was a good idea. Um, a list of the peripherals we use: three uh, PWM uh, for to drive the motors, two QDEC. Uh, we'll explain after what what is it. Uh, two UART, one for debugging and one for potential uh, communication. Uh, we plan to use some XB or, or ZB uh, uh, wireless communication. We did not have time to do that. Uh, it will be mainly for next year, I think. Uh, I2C, uh, 8 ADC for the analog sensors, traps, and, uh, and some uh, various uh, GPIOs. About the architecture and scheduling, uh, Cortex one four threads with cooperating default scheduling. So um, in a, in during a game, we'll see the video later uh, as the final. But uh, 
there is three, uh, three steps sorted by decreasing priorities. The most important one, the motion control, we'll speak uh, about it after. The planner, we decide uh, which position to reach next and which uh, is doing the avoidance algorithm. And uh, a thread dedicated to the analog sensors because you need to be refreshed uh, often. We have an optional cal cal calibration thread. Um, it could be C like uh, like reboot. Someone knows that uh, that bootloader. Uh, when it, when we start Riot, we have some uh, we have three seconds to press uh, press a key and enter that calibration mode. It gives us the possibility to, uh, to do some step step by step uh, uh, motion. Uh, going to one position, check all is okay. Uh, we can tune uh, PID uh, parameters. PID are the, are the correctors to make the robot go, go straight. And we had, we had a, a simple program which uses Getra. It was ported uh, from our previous, uh, our previous uh, firmware, AVR firmware. And, um, and we, got, uh, we got blocking calls. So uh, it was just a bit, uh, a bit difficult. And uh, we, uh, we did a, a dedicated uh, thread. It's not very clean, but uh, we will reward that uh, this year. The scaling uh, is cooperative. It means uh, there is no CSIC like on the STM42. We have some, uh, you have some, uh, some other functionality that, uh, that allow that. Uh, we have not used them. So uh, all threads are fired uh, in a sequential way, one after the one after the, uh, the other. And um, it's one thread allows the next one to run. So. If we, uh, if we have a thread that, uh, that is not uh, launched or that takes times, uh, two more times, it will be, a, it will be a, a, a real problem, mainly for a, from a motion control. So um, everything is done actually in a one period of 20 milliseconds. Uh, hoping it works. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's the case. But uh, it, cannot, it cannot stay that time because uh, we have some very heavy algorithm, uh, mainly for avoidance. We have uh, six, uh, six uh, analog sensors that uh, that can detect some uh, some uh, some obstacles. If, if they detect them, uh, the the uh, DOS is, uh, the this thread will be, uh, will take uh, really more time than uh, than we expect. So uh, we are planning to to turn to give a, a, a preemption to, uh, to this thread. And uh, we are using the STM32 uh, uh, hardware assistive timer. That is a um, very, uh, uh, there is a peer request about it. Uh, that just shown as an example, and I'm trying to turn it generic uh, to use it uh, on, uh, on other platforms like uh, Avier that don't have that cystic timer, and we could use a, a traditional uh, timer to do that. Uh, so we will have to rework our robot code, source code, to uh, accordingly. So we have to add mutex, take care of the routine version problem. And uh, that's for the, the next year. <coughs> uh, let's speak about motion control. Uh, Cortex is protocol using two differential wheels. Uh, the motion control algorithm makes the robot go straight because if you if you um, put the same voltage on two DC motors, uh, even if uh, even if they are the same, there's still one which will turn faster than the other. So we need a we need a corrector, and it's a quad PID corrector. Um, we correct position and we correct speed. To achieve this. Um, the motion control needs are uh, driving two DC GPN motors, uh, and we develop motor driver for uh, Riot OS. Um, it's an incoming in request. Um, the, the contest was very, uh, very uh, a lot of work. Uh, we slept around uh, two hours by night during the last week, so uh, we did not have time to uh, to publish all uh, right now. But it will come uh, in the 
in the in the following weeks. Um, we can drive several types of hash bridge. Uh, hash bridge um, it permits to drive the, the motors in a, in different uh, in different uh, uh, rotations uh, direction. And um, to be tested, we have some brushless motors and staples motor in continuous mode. So one driver should drive the should drive them all. Um, and uh, we are measuring distance from incremental encoders, pass quadrature. Uh, I will show it after. Uh, and uh, and uh, we wanted to do some uh, motion simulation because one one robot for several developers, it's hard to uh, to work. Uh, all at the same time on the robot, so we need to implement some uh, some simulation ways with the native uh, architecture. Uh, I will show you a video about the the mechanic base. Just to illustrate. Ah, yes, I have to. <laughs> Don't use Linux. <laughs> okay. So is the mechanic is the mechanics of the base? You see uh, two, the two motors in the in the back, two uh, two motor wheels that will uh, very uh, not very thin, large. Uh, that will uh, that will uh, motion the robot, and two cutting wheels on the side, very thin. To uh, when you turn, when the robot turns, the center is uh, is very precise. So uh, uh, we use some uh, some elastics to be sure the the cutting wheel is still uh, touching the the floor. Okay. Uh, Just a quick another one. Don't take the visa card; it's uh, it's outdated. <laughs> um, I will show you. <laughs> it's the it's the wheel mounting. I want if I can just go through and find my yeah. Get it. Okay, you will see the the wheel is very uh is very precise. There is no mechanic slack. Okay, it's very important to, uh, to use it, as you can see. Okay, so um, let's go back to the application. So to drive the coding wheels, you see on the on the side. Uh, I developed a QDEC driver API uh, that manages three modes. As you can see, uh, to know the, the rotation direction, you have two information, same, same signal A and signal B. When you have a rising edge on uh, signal A, you can check the state of signal B. If it's up, it, so it can turn clockwise. If it's low, uh, it turns uh, counterclockwise. But you can use rising edge on signal A, but you can use uh, rising, rising and falling edge on signal A, and the same on signal B. So you can multiply by four the precision of your coding wheels. We have uh, 500 pulse by round for the um, for, um, for coding wheels, so we can reach uh, 2,000. Pulse by run for opening wheels. And that corresponds to the mode QDEC XR, uh, X1, X2, X4. Actually, uh, this is an hardware feature for STM42, uh, but I, I implement, implement it for a native architecture. We developed it to use for simulation purpose. It's also available on ATX Mega, but uh, 
it needs to be uh, to be ported. It could be available also on our uh, MCU. The Motor Driver API, um, as I said, we support uh, most of uh, H-Bridge uh, hardware drivers uh, and several motors uh, by hardware drivers. Uh, there is some single H-Bridge, uh, double H-Bridge. Uh, we manage the direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, and brake if available. It's not already, uh, always the case. Uh, and speed control using PWM. It's a wheelchair driver, so uh, it uses some features uh, very classic uh, on the on, on the MCU. So it uses PWM drivers and, and, uh, and GPIO, so it should be available on most of the MCU supported by Riot. And the pull request uh, is incoming. Motion control simulation. Uh, as I said before, we have only one robot for several developers. Could be a problem. Uh, another problem is that I do not run fast enough behind the robot uh, when there is a problem. Uh, the robot uh, weight is around uh, 20 kilos. So uh, you imagine when it is launched to uh, two meters by second, it could be very da dangerous. Flashing the robot several times on test table is, is, uh, is very painful. Uh, and uh, robot moving is visual. So uh, if you, we do simulation, what we can do, we need to have a visual rendering. Solutions. Um, we try to emulate the simulates, um, is, is, seems to be a better word, to, between the QDEC and the PWM drivers. And uh, so we ported the, the PWM drivers for the native architecture. And, uh, and we made a simple average, speed average between the uh, PWM and the QDEC. Normally, in in a physical or a real robot, there's not direct relationship, mathematical relationship between them. That's what does the, the PID correctors. But for simulation, we can do it with Riot. And we need to stream positional information to a 3D renderer. Of course, uh, to have a visual information and to not read the matrix, uh, we stream the, the information using a, a new art. Uh, uh, using the console, sorry, uh, to uh, put on script on FreeCAD. I don't know if some of you uh, know FreeCAD. It's a 3D uh, parametric modeler that we use to, to design some robots. So it's a pure simulation, but as I said, it could be dangerous when you do your first test to put the robot on the table and to launch it. It could be very dangerous, and uh, you can break the you can break the the, the robot. So uh, the first week, the physical tests can still lead to run fast on the robot. That's why the emergency stop button is very important. And uh, the context and condition could make it difficult to test the robot. Uh, the solution is to use rollers. Uh, the robot can be tested without, uh, without moving. It stays on the table. And, uh, and uh, we can still use the, the free cat on the robot to display what happens on the robot. Just to illustrate, you have the, the rollers here yeah, are made with 3D printing and some just uh, cheap, uh, cheap materials. The robots on the, on, the, uh, on the rollers, and as you can see, it may be difficult, but you have the propulsion wheels and the coding wheels. So when the propulsion wheels start, it makes the rollers start, and so the, the coding wheels too. Let's try to see another video. So it's the simulation in FreeCAD. So I will press the robot motion button, which not the screen that we developed. And uh, it's the position of the robot uh, in the screen, but it's not the stop position within the left, it's the table. And here, you can see what happens. The robot is on the rollers, it doesn't move. And we make it turn, and we see what is happening on the table. So uh, the red part 
it's normal. The red part is the obstacle. And we grow the obstacle to consider um, the side of the obstacle as some uh, uh, passage point. Okay? So uh, it's normal if it's low in the corner of each obstacle. The gray cube, the big, the big gray cube in the center is a static obstacle. And uh, the red one is the, is the dynamic obstacle detected by analog sensor, just by end on the front of the, on the sensor. Okay? So it is the algorithm, uh, avoidance algorithm. Okay. So, the final video. <coughs> so it's uh, the robot uh, in real action, taking some ball in the, in the distributor. You will see the speed here and <laughs> yes, the rules was to throw some balls uh, using uh, using the robot, and uh, <laughs> I got the point. <laughs> okay, you see the B on the left. And by my children. <laughs> it's very precise. You, you will store it in a, in a second. So it, it turn on the switch. It be used too for robotics. <laughs> and other precision. We, we could share with uh, our wire. We are around uh, five millimeters of the of the side here. Went back. <laughs> okay. Well. I know you, you like that, so we did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Always save the computer. <laughs> It will drop the, all the balls, the bad balls. The orange balls are the bad balls. It was uh, the, the rule, I did not speak about it, but was to uh, sort uh, good water from bad water. Green water is the good one, orange one is the bad one. And uh, it's the end. I just push some, uh, some cube in the Indiana in the That's it. Okay. Uh, what's new for, for the next year? We saw that uh, sharp sensors are not really, uh, really, uh, really good at all. Uh, it's not linear, so we will uh, use some new uh, uh, components, uh, VL for 53 uh, L, uh, LOX sensors from ST. Uh, we developed a new ATO leader uh, X5 on the drivers. It's a leader. The, the code is running on Riot actually, but uh, it's not uh, integrated. Um, we need a real cleaning and stabilization of the source code. Uh, it is very dirty. It's a rush in one year, so next year we don't have new great features uh, in the, the river. We will stabilize and clean. Uh, the, the, the code is, is really a mess today. Uh, full reworking of the robot uh, scheduling. As we said before, uh, it's not really preemptive as we want it to be. Uh, so uh, we need to rework that to be sure uh, that, uh, the, that the most important thread will be, uh, will be uh, always launched at a good time. And we will introduce some wireless communication. We all do with some, uh, it's wire. The table is two meter uh, and three meter long and two meter large. So uh, it's, uh, it's very painful to, to, uh, to debug it on the, on the table. So uh, mainly we may maybe use USB, ZB, maybe Bluetooth, we don't really know actually. Um, 
So uh, for wireless programming, wireless debugging, and uh, we want to introduce multi-robot communication because there is cortex we would expect to have been used to. Um, and of course, we need to make a lot of testing. Uh, so let's show we, uh, of, uh, of uh, what didn't work uh, on the bad moment. <laughs> Murphy's law. And of course, sharing, 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 sharing. Um, a website is not really, uh, is, is a bit dead, because we did not have time to be focused on the code and the, on the GitHub, so uh, we, will, uh, we will update that in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, same for the code, we have still a, um, a cleanup branch already available, still some commit to split. Um, so uh, you have the server for Linux and server for Linux GitHub, uh, uh, Link uh, because we will use OC Riot in the in Sagar for Linux uh, on the distributed project. So uh, we could talk about it uh, outside. Um, Kojip, GitHub, and uh, the Riot fork and the MCU, uh, MCU firmware. Thank you very much for this evening. There are there any questions that you want to ask in front of the, the audience instead of us at lunch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, how fast is the uh, motion control running in the, the control? Uh, we have a period of 20 milliseconds for the motion control. Uh, it has been defined it by a uh, empiric method. Um, it's classical in this kind of robots in the contest. Uh, most of the robots are using the uh, 10 millisecond, 20. Uh, it's around that time. Uh, the robots, uh, for the physical performance of the robot, we just used uh, its speed is around uh, one meter by second and uh, 0, 0, 5, uh, 0, 0 0.5 meter by uh, second uh, minus 2 for acceleration. So uh, it is fast, but as as you saw it uh, very fast in the in the in the video, we can really go faster. But uh, the analog sensor, I'm not uh, not giving up enough. Uh, the range is not enough long to, to detect uh, over uh, over obstacle and many over robots to uh, to go uh, faster. But uh, the motors and uh, and the system could be really really. One more question. Do you play in any real time analysis, like worst case execution time, uh, worst case response time, which would involve the scheduler of the OS, break on the kind of scheduling? Yes, it, it will be part of the test. Uh, it will be part of the, of the test. We got uh, very much problems uh, during, uh, during the competition. Uh, sometimes the, the, the avoidance algorithm takes too much time, and so the motion control goes crazy. So uh, we need really to ensure that, and uh, we, we want to make it more industrial. Yeah, we want to make it really, uh, really, uh, real, realable. And uh, yeah, we, we it's uh, it's in the plan. We are, we will have some testing. That's what uh, I meant. But, uh, Testing a very important. Testing is the most important thing, and we did not do that uh, enough uh, this year. Okay, thanks. I would propose to um, take all the remaining discussion questions to the lunch break. And yeah, let's thank the speakers again.